It's been months, months since the release of Barbie, and still I lie awake at night tortured by the same question. Why was Barbie so successful? After all, the great prophecy has promised us that if you go woke, you invariably go broke. Many commentators have said it's because of the marketing or the brand recognition. And while those elements definitely could have contributed to the film's success, there is more to why Barbie was the highest grossing film of 2023, breaking in $1.4 billion worldwide. I had to crack the code, so I did the only thing I could think of. I watched Barbie back to back 83 times until I passed out, woke up, and I had the answer. Barbie was girly. Does the word duh mean anything to you? Okay, okay, hear me out because it's a rare occurrence these days to find a female character that's actually girly. I don't want to be too dramatic here, but according to modern Hollywood, feminine characters are literally the worst, like masculine male characters. Forget the dress and the cute heels. They want to see a girl with rippling muscles, starting fights at the bar, riding a motorcycle and emotions? Nah, this girl eats emotions for breakfast with a side of patriarchy. <laughs> The last five years of Hollywood movies have been supposedly targeted towards women, but rather than creating anything original, the studios have taken typically male-oriented franchises that appeal to a male fan base and just searched and replaced the heroes with heroes and expected women to fall to their knees crying with relief. Wait, no, scratch that. Women aren't allowed to cry, remember? And falling to their knees is only something that men should be doing, thank you very much. They expected women to just stand perfectly still in superhero poses with no change whatsoever in their expression. Unfortunately for Disney and all the other studios, the strong female trope is not actually appealing to women. Maybe to some women, but a majority would much rather go to a movie where a woman is actually allowed to be, you know, a woman. I know, who would have thought? So absolutely starved for movies that actually appeal to them. For women in this entertainment desert, Barbie stood out like a cute pink sore thumb. And it was sort of refreshing to see a movie that wasn't forcing a masculinized version of women down our throats. Barbie was actually pretty and cute and cried when she felt sad. You know, like a human woman. God, my standards are low. Again, I can't emphasize enough how rare that is these days. The marketing also sold the movie really well, dressing Margot Robbie in perfect Barbie outfits. And girls and women everywhere followed suit, picking their own perfect pink outfits to wear to the movies. So if Barbie ditched the concept of the strong female character, what exactly made it a woke film? Simplest way to tell? Does the film pander to its intended audience? A good story never panders. It intends to connect with a universal truth, a human experience of love or loss, and share a story of growth, perseverance, and hopefully triumph. A good story inspires. Woke films don't do that. They tend to lie, telling women they can be physically superior to men or that they're oppressed and should reject the norms of society. Woke films look to pander to egos of the subset of the audience they like and lecture and denigrate the subset they hate. Barbie did this by insulting men and showed that women who choose to work with men in harmony only really do so because they are brainwashed by the patriarchy. As in, women could accomplish so much if it weren't for those pesky creatures called men. There is also an outright rejection of any kind of romance between men and women. Ken is totally superfluous. <laughs> <laughs> the film reached its highest pinnacle of pandering, however, thanks to a speech delivered by America Ferrera's character, whose name I should look up, but I didn't because patriarchy. The YouTube comment section of the clip of this monologue is full of women sharing just how much the speech resonated with them and captured the truth of their daily struggles, moving many to tears. I, however, found the speech to be not only wildly inaccurate, but deeply troubling because of its messaging to women and girls. The speech is rooted in the belief that being a woman is some sort of handicap right from the beginning. It is literally impossible to be a woman. We need to break down the speech, but before we get to that, let's quickly talk about our sponsor, Aura. A couple years ago, an ex-boyfriend, angry post-breakup, tracked me down, even though it was incredibly unpleasant. Luckily, the situation didn't get too serious, but ever since, I've been extremely nervous about my personal information floating around. This became particularly important when I started this YouTube channel, and in anticipation of going live with my first ever video, I googled myself and found pages upon pages of my personal information just out there for anyone to grab. My unpleasant experience has taught me the importance of online privacy and security, not just for me, but for everyone close to me. And if this concerns you too, consider a service like Aura. 
Aura offers a comprehensive online security solution that helps you manage your digital footprint. From showing you which data brokers are selling your information to automatically submitting opt-out requests on your behalf, Aura does the heavy lifting so you don't have to worry about who might be tracking you down or why. Aura also provides antivirus protection, a VPN for secure browsing, identity theft insurance, and more all wrapped up into one simple, affordable package. I'm not trying to be an alarmist here. The reality is your information is probably sitting out there right now, exposed to anyone who wants it. Aura's given me a two week free trial to share with you all, which you can get by going to aura.com slash baggage claim. And Aura will show you exactly where you are vulnerable and help you stay protected. It's about peace of mind, knowing that your digital life is secure so you can focus on living your real one. Thank you for listening and now back to the video. Let's break down the Barbie monologue. To explain why it is so hard to be a woman in the modern world where we can literally do whatever the hell we want, the script explains the contrasting advice that women commonly receive when it comes to topics like their weight. You have to be thin, but not too thin. And you can never say you wanna be thin. You have to say you wanna be healthy, but also you have to be thin or when it comes to their work. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. And motherhood. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. However, every single one of these complaints is missing one big point. Yes, you should be thin, i.e. healthy, but no, you shouldn't be too thin, i.e. unhealthy. Yes, leadership is good, but no, you shouldn't be a tyrant. And yes, don't talk about your kids all the damn time. Just like you shouldn't talk about your job, your boyfriend, your car, or complain all the time. It's called balance. You have to be a career woman, but also always be looking out for other people. These are not mutually exclusive ideas. I partially agree with the frustration here. We shouldn't push a career on women who don't want one. If some women would prefer to be full-time mothers and homemakers, we should value that just as much. But if a woman does choose to be a career woman, what's wrong with encouraging her to also be looking out for other people? We certainly tell men to do that as well. Being self-centered, where one is only concerned with their own needs, their own ambitions, their desires, is not good for the people around them, nor is it good for the individual. The best way to build a good life with strong bonds and relationships is to find the balance between meeting your own needs as well as being there for those around you. Again, the key word is balance. Serving others at your own personal detriment is just as bad as being so self-centered that you are hardly concerned with a single other being. The film, however, is pushing an idea that a lot of women in the West have been convinced of for the last couple decades, that the system is rigged against women. You're supposed to stay pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or that you threaten other women because you're supposed to be a part of the sisterhood, but always stand out and always be grateful. There is a basic truism that if you want something, you have to work for it. If you want the attention of a man, you have to put effort into how you present yourself. Yes, that can mean that you accidentally attract the attention from the wrong sort of men, which can be unpleasant. Yes, it can also mean that you can make other women jealous. These are expected discomforts of life. Why are they worth crying over like this? You know what this sounds like to me? It sounds like the complaints of a person who wants their life to be so much harder than it really is. We who live in the developed world are literally the most spoiled humans ever. If we have to go without a hot shower for even one day, we lose our minds. And yes, I had to take a cold shower a week ago and I'm still upset about it. And I personally blame the patriarchy. There is so much to be grateful for. Look around, we are living the life of such privilege where food, comfort, entertainment, and convenience are so abundant that even the kings of old would envy us. Is life perfect? No, of course not. If we're not happy with what we have though, I doubt we could ever be happy in a perfect world. Not when people walk around trying to convince us that we are unbelievably oppressed and any encouragement to be grateful is nothing more than the patriarchal attempt at controlling women. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane, but if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. Wait, how are women being made to answer for men's bad behavior? Perhaps she means the old school approach of what we now call victim blaming, where 
woman who perhaps gets drunk, wears revealing clothing, and walks down an empty street late at night is blamed for what travesties befall her. In that scenario, however, the police and the courts wouldn't hold her responsible. No, instead they would seek to get her justice by arresting the perpetrator. Society in the form of her parents, her friends, or neighbors may wonder why she put herself in that precarious situation that some sociopath degenerate took advantage of. Perhaps that's what she means by being made to answer for men's bad behavior. It's not accurate though. The modern feminist has this false belief that men somehow live life full of privileges and without any consequences, and are trying to argue for the same made up idea of a consequence free existence for women as well, when such a reality has never existed for any living being. We all have to live with the consequences of our actions, good or bad, and no amount of soapboxing is going to change that. If a man walked around with a wad of cash falling out of his pocket and got mugged, everyone would wonder about his judgment too. No one would say the person who perpetrated the crime isn't the criminal, but we all owe ourselves and everyone who loves us some attempt at keeping ourselves out of harm's way. The biological reality is that women are far more susceptible to sexual attacks than men. It's a small percentage of men who commit those attacks and those men don't care how many signs you hold up to stop female assault. They're gonna do it anyway. And blaming all men for the actions of a small minority is not only unfair, it's insane. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never fail, never show fear, never get out of line. Barbie is essentially arguing against the reality of life. It's too hard, it's too contradictory, and nobody gives you a medal or says thank you. Life is uncertain. Life is full of contradictions and infinite paths and pitfalls which are difficult to navigate. And yes, that can cause misery, but as a wise man in a much better movie once said, Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. Barbie is no exception. It's selling to its predominantly female audience that life shouldn't have to be pain. Moreover, that all this pain could be avoided if we just stopped challenging each other and just accepted each other for whoever and whatever we are. The movie is telling its audience to embrace the fact that they are enough. But despite its name, the writers don't actually understand Barbie. Barbie is about being better, prettier, smarter. Barbie is a figure to aspire to, something to reach up to. That's why Barbie isn't dressed up in three-day-old sweatpants with oily hair and Cheeto stains on her fingers. Barbie is about inspiring effort, like the effort of wearing your cutest, prettiest, pinkest outfit just to go watch a movie. There's nothing wrong with that. Working to be the best parent, the best manager, the best friend, simply the best person possible no matter what miseries impede your way is a good thing. Incredibly, the modern Hollywood perspective, however, has morphed into messaging that discourages effort. It's wrong to try to look pretty for men. It's wrong for men to try to get the attention of a woman. It's wrong to be careful and avoid risky situations. It's wrong to try to be the healthiest version. Why? Well, because not having something or doing something a little wrong will cause too much discomfort. And we have to protect women from even the slightest discomfort because clearly we're all too weak to even handle and overcome a single instance of negativity. In the end, it all lines up because Hollywood really does look at being a woman as some sort of disability and is trying its best to convince us that every slight inconvenience is caused by the patriarchy. Their messaging is all about coddling us and telling us that we're the most incredible queens at the same time. As a result, a lot of women are soaking up this modern feminist mode of operation. Don't ask me to do anything. Don't say anything to me. And how dare you question me? As a matter of fact, who gave you permission to even talk to me? And if anything is wrong in my life, then it's clearly because of men. Thank you. And where the damn hell is my medal for just existing? I'm a queen. I'm a she-wolf. I'm an oppressed she-wolf queen. Pity me, but also bow down to me while you're pitying me. This is narcissism. It's a desire to never be questioned, cleverly hidden behind the facade of intense self-victimization. I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us.
And there it is. This is weaponized vulnerability. This ideology of narcissism packaged up as pro-mental health has been pervasive through much of Hollywood and television, and honestly, society. It has convinced women everywhere that they are victims simply for being women, and there is no need for them to take any form of personal responsibility for the problems in their lives, and that they should feel angry and resentful for not receiving accolades for existing. This is the crux of Barbie's messaging, inherited from the self-esteem movement telling women that they are perfect, no matter what society or specifically the male aspect of society has to say. Even though this is flawed advice, the movie and the monologue has touched so many women for a reason. Many of us have the desire to be told that we are beautiful and perfect just as we are, and that the aspects of our lives going poorly are not our fault. There's a part of us that enjoys being pandered to, because it means we don't have to do the hard work of taking responsibility, of fixing our lives, of going to the gym, eating healthy, or figure out the precarious balance between work and family and make sure we're kind and yet firm and lead effectively instead of bossing everyone around. It takes a lot of work to be the best version of yourself. That's the reward of a judgmental society that tells you that you're not enough. It doesn't tell you that to put you down. It does so, so you can rise up. It's damn easy to pander to a person, but it's hard to tell people that they can do better. That's uncomfortable, but invaluable. It's no surprise, however, that modern Hollywood, along with feminism, would rather take the easy route than give us women a movie or a message that would actually inspire us. Why? Well, because patriarchy. <laughs> I kid, I kid. In a future video, I will break down exactly why Hollywood has adopted the strategy of pandering to its audience. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.